So I want to demonstrate a couple projects and let me tell you what we already talked about um, command injection here. And so SQL injection I demonstrated in my web application hacking class and I think some students are in there. So I'll come back to it later but the one I want to show you today is the first buffer overflow which goes right along with the lecture. So I'm going to do this one and then I'll make a separate video with the SQL injection which will pretty much be a repeat of what was in my other class. And if you haven't learned SQL injection it's a good thing to learn. So let's talk about this one here Linux buffer overflow with command injection. I'm using a Debian 10 virtual machine um, which is the same thing you get if you made a Google Cloud machine but you could use any other version of Linux and it would all be the same. The only difference is if you use something like a Red Hat machine then it wouldn't be apt you use to install software but yum. Anyway um, so I'm going to make a vulnerable program and I've already got it here. There we go so I quit from here and let's look at this vulnerable program called buff.c. Okay so it's got a subroutine called bo and then down here it's got a calling routine and the calling routine asks for your name and puts it in a variable that can hold up to 200 characters and then it calls the bo subroutine with two string parameters. The first one is the name you typed in and the second one is the string date which is a simple uh, Linux command. And what the bo subroutine does is first it um, it eventually is going to execute the command C and say goodbye to your name but before that it takes the command that it got from the user and the name and it copies both of them into variables that only have room for 40 characters. So your name can be up to 200 characters long but down here gets copied into a much smaller buffer and the point is this is the simplest kind of buffer overflow. It's going to copy into the variable C and into the variable N and if the name is longer than 40 characters it's going to leak into the next variable and overwrite it. So this is the simplest kind of buffer overflow. So I've already compiled that one so if I do buff uh, oh it's buff32 is what I called it because I made a 32-bit version. Okay so if my name is Sam it says goodbye Sam and then it executes the command date and I see the date and my machine seems to be on central time for some reason but anyway um, so here I printed out where those variables are located so I can see that the name is at 4f0 and the command is at 518. So that's the point the name is here at a lower number a lower address than the command so if the name gets too long it's going to override the command. So if I put in 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 50 characters it's not going to execute the command date like it did before it's going to try to execute the command EEE -E -E and then complain that EEE -E -E is not found. So some of the characters I typed in were interpreted as a command and now I have simple command injection just like in the ping form that we did last time. So I can do it by having 40 characters like that I'm going to put it in the clipboard and so if I run it and put in that stuff and then ls it'll execute the command ls. So now I can execute commands like this I can do ls id to see who I am date and so on and it'll execute those commands. This is the ls here's the id to tell me who I am here's the date and so on. Once again you've got um, command injection into here um, into bash. So that's the simplest kind of overflow and of course we'll be doing a lot other kinds later. All right so I'm going to stop this one and make a separate video of the SQL injection.